partners should not be competitive with each other. Newlyweds should exercise caution before <laughs> partnering. The, I mean, there's a whole list. So I would, I would uh, not hesitate to have a, a facilitator to talk uh -huh. about partners. That's good. <laughs> I just had a, a, a general question about the types of employment we're talking about. We seem to be talking a lot about consultancy and the needs of some type of consultant space, whether it's shared space or, or private space, to have those types of activities. I wonder, Jerry, in, in your work, uh, when you're helping entrepreneurs, uh, specifically older entrepreneurs, are you seeing um, you know, kind of the, the maker community, if you will, moving into an older generation where it's not just you know the millennials or the 3D printers oh, yes. coming up with something. Mm -hmm. And so there are different spatial needs for those folks to stay involved and just Sometimes it's going. trades, you know, people right. who've, who've worked in woodworking, or, right. you know, and now they are in their garage making wonderful wood products mm -hmm. and selling them on Etsy. Right. You know, that's, they're, they're busy. Right. Uh, sometimes it's, it's having a, a tradescraft, maybe they're plumbers or electricians, and, and now they're ready to, to retire, but they have a home remodeling business. Right. And so th there is that, there's professional services, there's people who are lawyers who have retired that right. say, yeah, I'll be on the board, and those kind of things, and they get some stipends. So yeah, there's, there's, it's the whole gamut. It, it's not just, uh, I had a guy in my office, 60 some years old yesterday, who was an acoustics engineer, and is building a high-end headphone, uh, but he was part of Beats by Dre. And so, wow. you know, that was wow. part of his launch, right. and now he's retired, and he said, I'm going to do this again, and he's crowdfunding. You know, if you got a good idea and the right folks, you're there. So you're, you're right, it's all over the board. It's interesting, we had this, um, Lisa had this great idea when we were working on Babcock about, because I, I think there's still a place here that um, is more of a maker's, um, you know, where they've got the saws and woodworking and all that stuff. And we said, well, wouldn't it be great to create a maker's district for the residents, where again, it's not just for the people who live in the community, but like anybody can utilize it, and um, there's actually a group in San Francisco that has a, um, I don't know if they're franchised yet, but I asked them, I said, could you ever see yourself in more of a greenfield environment versus this urban environment? And they didn't think it was sustainable if you didn't have the density up front, um, which, of course, you know, I always want to try something that somebody hasn't tried, but what I liked about the Maker's District was it's a simple building, and, you know, it's a, it's a fairly cheap building. You know, you love a building with, you know, I know you make a really good facade for it, but it can be a simple building. But again, it gives those people something to do. I, I think a lot of people, what I see when they retire, are very creative. Uh -huh. Painting, they're uh -huh. making stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it, that's, that's the nice part about retirement is you can actually start exploring your more creative side. Sure. Photography now is just huge. So I think that there's, I think people need to be thinking about that too versus just a place to, to swim and yeah. and play golf and then yeah and I think you know to your point what for the community development that that I think that we do I've always tried to be very sensitive to homeowners association fees because that obviously goes into affordability so trying to figure out how to pull those amenities out of an HOA only resident only amenity is always been really important to me because quite often Quite frankly, it actually causes a lot of fights and a lot of arguments mm -hmm. that is just really, really frustrating. But when it when it becomes more of a civic um, amenity that they know that you know somebody from Winter Park or Maitland or anybody else can use, all of a sudden it's this great place that they want people to gather, and you don't have that propriety. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, and then that also helps affordability. The other thing um, I wanted to mention on the. Um, on the active adult and independent living that I thought was really interesting, and I'm not in that um, realm, but a lot of those um, service providers are bringing in daycare centers because the people who live there want to interact with the young kids. They benefit from you know um, interacting with the senior community, and it gives them back that sense of purpose, and then they've got Ted Youth Run, and I thought that that was huge. Um, and then going back to your point on spiritual um, and the faith-based community, when you create these multi-purpose settings, on Sunday mornings, you can open up the facility for church until you get that population in. Mm -hmm. And they can you know, either buy them out, of course, to prep, um, or if you had to donate it, but, um, but that, you know, something like that. And, and those are when you create authentic real places that are not just um, prior to the people who live there and are to the HOA, I think you're able to really create a community faster and more affordable and accessible. Yeah, there's 
more important and healthier to <coughs> provide honesty. You give people less things to argue about. I mean, I watched my um, father-in-law argue about who's in a GL community, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm not in an HOA right now. <laughs> so, but, but when you turn it in, and I think when you turn it over to the resident, yeah. the creativity and going back to that sense of purpose, they do so many more cool things than we could ever dream of doing. I think we try to over-program over people's lives, and we have to pay those programmers to do that. And I think if you can not be so afraid of controlling things in the community, then um, your residents are going to bring you a tremendous amount of benefit. Um, but you got to, and I love you know what you were saying. I think that is, that's huge. Sir, you had a response. Oh yeah, I just had a general question about the survey. Um, first of all, I, what was the source of uh, student respondents? I don't know whether it was. So we work with Research Now, and they have a panel of people. So like when we worked um, school tribes or more, here or people that are more service or offering student service, and they seem to have the most. They're kind of the one of the survey companies that's kind of middleman, and they seem to have the most direct yeah. resource. So um, so that was through the youth work panel. Cool. I mean, I didn't know if you guys were able to ascertain if uh, an interim distribution of the people that are still working, or like the asset value of those that are retired within that yeah. session. Yeah. Yeah. The owners obviously people have more money, they're yeah. more likely to move, so yeah. maybe that yeah. skews a little bit more. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thank you all so much for all the thoughts. What we'll do, we'll put a, a report together once we get all the five workshops done, and we'll take a look at what we see in the different areas, and then we'll have an overall rental. So I hope that we can share that with you and you find it very helpful. What I heard today, I think the biggest thing that comes back to me is the need for collaboration mm -hmm. um, on so many different levels. We, we have to be mindful that things cost money. How can we achieve the maximum without always having the dollar rule everything that we do? I, I, again, I have no answers mm -hmm. to that, but I think looking in a collaborative way, what resources do we have? Um, I learned things that I didn't know just even by trying to work on this grant and listening. We have things here, we just don't always all know. And, and that would be a, a big help. An innovation center, um, I love the idea of that. Uh, I think that the term, I think part of our problem here too is just goes back to conception. So maybe when we change some of our term, terminology, that will give us a fresh view on, on, on things that maybe we're all thinking, but we just haven't, haven't named it and go back to the old mindset of, of how we do things. Um, I think someone mentioned the focus groups. I think you did. Um, that, I wish we could do that. Yeah. Maybe if we can. Um, step two. Step two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that would be fantastic um, to, to look across. Mm -hmm. and any other thoughts, um, Lisa? I mean, what are you looking at for? What are you tapping? Um, I thought it was great. I think collaborative <laughs> innovation that comes out of it. Just there's the, and, and I think when we talked about it, it's like we're right at the edge. There's so many opportunities. We can use so many ideas and so many things that aren't out there right now. And uh, it's just exciting to think about what can happen. But I, I thought it was great. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.